know, and welcome, we'd like to welcome the elementary school families to the presentation today made by the elementary school principals. My name is Todd Junker, I'm the principal at Fairbank Shore Elementary School. Hi, I'm Dave Johnson, I'm the principal at Churchville Elementary. Good afternoon, I'm now the principal at Chestnut Ridge Elementary. And what we'd like to share today is what we've been doing in order to prepare for the reopening of school this September. Uh, we looked at many of the questions that families and parents have sent in, along with some of the questions that the staff has been asking us this summer. And we've compiled that information uh, to start off with sharing today. Uh, being through the live stream, we know that there are questions can pop up during the live stream. And we have Mandy Colo is going to be there, our contact person for that will be asking us questions. Um, and on the side, too, we also have our assistant principals, Renee Malrumi and Jennifer Dixon, that will be helping us out today, too. Uh, we first like to start off by thanking the parents and families for all that you have done, especially last spring. Uh, we really went into uncharted waters and we did a fantastic job of pulling it together, but it was really due to the support from the family. So we'd like to thank you for that. Uh, as we move forward to this fall, the instruction and, and what the day will look like will be quite different than what it was in the spring. And once again, we'd like to thank you in, in, in advance for your flexibility and your patience, um, because we're trying to figure this out uh, as we go along. Um, and we know that there's gonna be some things that we're gonna have to change uh, as we get further along into this uh, come September. So we'd like to thank you up front. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Johnson to lead us. All right. So in doing this work and the decisions that we had to make, we had some guiding principles that we'd like to share with you. And on the screen, I believe you can see uh, what they are. They include the health and safety of all our students and staff. So we turn over to Mr. Johnson. Equitable and accessible instruction. We want to maximize in-person instruction or synchronous instruction. We have to have flexibility to adapt to the current status. So we have to be ready to go fully out, fully in, whatever the status of the environment around us, we have to be flexible to go. We want clear structure and accountability for staff and students, and we would like to have staff working on campus. In the area of health and safety, there will be health checks. So we're gonna ask staff and students to verify that they're healthy and meet the, the guidelines. Um, we'll have social distancing, face coverings, and PPE. Health hygiene will be taught and enforced, including hand washing, respiratory etiquette, wearing PPE properly. We'll be cleaning and disinfecting, and there will be products in all classrooms and desk coverings at times. We will limit visitors on our campus, and any visitors will also have to verify that they also meet the safety requirements. We will continue to do our school safety drills, such as our lockdowns and fire drills, and students will be um, asked, they'll be able to bring a water bottle to school and encourage to leave an extra mask at school. At Churchville Elementary, the parent group will be providing water bottles for all students. Kim? Sure, to talk about the health office a little bit. We will be following the regulations and procedures established by the State Education Department and the Monroe County Health Department. Um, each day, uh, staff and students, uh, parents of students, will be asked to fill out the attestation form, um, basically verifying that you are symptom free and in good faith you're sending yourself and your child um, to school healthy. Any student, once they were there at school, any student showing any signs of concern would be evaluated by the nurse. The teacher would contact the nurse, the nurse would, would check out that student. If any, if we have any students or staff that are showing symptoms of concern, they would wait in a supervised secondary location for a parent to be to come and pick them up. And the nurse then would contact the family immediately asking them to come and pick up their child. Um, communication steps would be asking the parent to contact the primary care physician, and then the parent would follow the guidance of your primary care physician. That may or may not involve um, having them ask you to have your child um, or 
receive a COVID-19 test. Uh, the health department will be the ones directing us and doing any contact tracing. So any steps after that, based on any results, would come to us from the health department. Uh, to speak a little bit about the school schedules and um, how we're going to get started with the year. Next week, the week of August 24th, a mailing will be sent to families, including your child's teacher placement, along with traditional school opening information that comes in that packet. Uh, we just were in a meeting this morning and we're talking about the amount of things that need to come home and um, the timeliness of that. Uh, you may in fact receive more than one mailing from us so that we can get the immediate things out right away and then other things that you need for the start of school um, afterwards. But we just wanna make sure that some of that, that placement information and everything gets out to you as soon as possible. Um, the first day of school for all students, hybrid and remote is Thursday, September 10th. All learners will receive an email directly from your classroom teachers by September 9th with a Google Classroom invitation and will give you the information about how to log in and what time to, to come into the class if you're remote. School does run in real time Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for both remote learners and in-person learners and Wednesday students, all students will be working remotely. One of the biggest areas that will change this year um, is our arrival and dismissal processes. And this is something that we're working through. And once again, that we're gonna need um, parent support and parents' patience, especially the first week of school as we really work through this. Uh, when you sign your child up for either remote learning or in-person learning, uh, the hybrid uh, model, uh, we did ask about transportation needs also. Um, and I do know that all three buildings, the amount of parents that uh, will be driving their children is more than we've ever been ever had before by far. Um, so we are looking at some staggering of times for parents to drop their children off in the morning, maybe a few minutes before the buses. Um, and then also ways that we can stage the buses to make sure once again, that the number one thing is that your, your children are safe. Uh, so that's something that all the schools are going to be working on and sharing with parents. Um, once again, the, the times for that parent drop off may change a little bit. Our dismissal process also in the afternoon is going to change a little bit. And in a, in a moment, I'm going to talk about an app that we'll be using to help us with that process. Um, but once again, we're looking at a large amount of parents and vehicles coming uh, to school to pick up their children. So we, we really appreciate um, your flexibility and your patience. Um, when we share that information of how that will work in the, in the buildings. Each building, the parking lots are set up a little bit different. Um, and in the other two schools, they're a little bit, the buses and the cars are isolated. Unfortunately, in my, on the Fairbanks campus, uh, the cars and buses come in together. Um, so we are looking at staging the buses over at the middle school at the end of the day. The, uh, we will have security at, at all three buildings also to help with the flow of traffic. The traffic pattern is going to be very important, and it's going to be very important for parents to follow that traffic pattern. Uh, traditionally, and, and this will continue um, this year, if you are picking up your child early, if you have if they have a dentist appointment, um, we always ask that you either send a note in or call ahead. And that's, that's really going to be important uh, for this year. Uh, one of the tools that we are using um, is an app called Pick My Kid. And on this platform, um, parents are going to be able to download a, an app on their smartphone. And so what will happen is when you arrive um, at your destination, whatever school it may be, um, you'll be able to mark down, uh, click on the app uh, that you're there to pick up your child. Um, what will happen, let's say it's uh, 11 o'clock for a dentist appointment. Um, as you get on campus, you would click on that it auto automatically go to the monitors for our secretaries that you're there to pick up your child. Um, they will notify the classroom teacher. Uh, your child will come down and then the secretaries or someone will be walking the child out of the building to the car. Um, parents will not be required to come in to sign their child out. By using the app, that will give us the written permission that we need and verification 
um, that your child is signed out uh, that day. At the end of the day, we'll be using that app. Once again, when you arrive on campus, you're gonna click on it that you're there to pick your child up. And as those come in, we will start organizing the students that are being picked up. We will call them off or notify the teachers. And then in each building, we're gonna have a process of various staff members outside uh, to help load the cars so the children will get in the correct cars. And, and each school, I think, is doing that a little bit different. Um, but there'll be more information from your child's school about what that will look like. Um, obviously, once again, we want to make sure that your child gets in the right car with the right person. Um, and we're really going to take our time to make sure that happens. If there is a change uh, on any given day that someone else is picking your child up, for example, grandma and grandpa, Please make sure all the forms in the office are up to date uh, with who can sign your child out. If they're not on that form when they come to pick them up, then we have to get a hold of you um, and that this will delay the entire process of your child being picked up from school. So everything that you send into school, as far as uh, who can pick your child up, um, is so important that information is updated. Uh, why I'm on that too, it's important that the school has every current phone number um, cell phone number um, for, for both parents, um, grandparents or whatever, and then also that we have a current email address, um, once again, for notification, and that will be help the teachers also stay in communication with the parents. But, so please make sure if there's ever any changes that all that information is um, updated in the office. The other piece with Pick My Kid uh, that we're gonna, going to be using is there will be a way that the families and once again, what Mr. Johnson talked about, that can verify that your child has no symptoms. And parents are going to have to um, sign in every morning um, and go to the app and click on that app for their child, say that they're symptom free. The, the nice thing about that is if you have a child in the middle school and high school, it will be one app and you can do it for all three or four kids, however many kids you have. Um, and what will happen though, it's going to be extremely um, important that the parents get in the routine of doing that. Uh, because once the school day starts, if the parents have not done that, well, then, then we're going to start a day off with the school nurse going to find those students to make sure that they're, they're symptom free. And if we have to do that for quite a few students, that's going to be um, very time consuming for us. So we're going to um, once again, send this information out, teach parents, show parents how you go about doing that, how you set up the account on your smartphone, um, and we'll be able to do that um, you know, to help us out to verify that all children are COVID free and then we can move forward with our day with that. Okay, so in looking at the operations of, of the school day, let's talk about the start of the day. Um, when the kids come into school, they'll notice there are safety signage, there's safety signage throughout the school in the halls, the cafeteria, classrooms, common areas, there will be markings on the floor to help remind them about social distancing as well. So there will be lots of reminders. Now, as they enter, whether they enter from the bus or from being dropped off, um, students that choose to have breakfast will be able to grab and go breakfast as, as needed. If the students want breakfast, after they grab it, they're gonna take it right to the classroom and eat breakfast in the classroom as they get ready to start the day. Um, we'll move everyone directly to their classrooms as they enter the building, and they're gonna wash their hands or sanitize upon entering the classroom. Once they get in the classroom, the teachers will take attendance and students will be expected to attend school each day, whether they are in person or remote. Consideration will be given to those students who complete work but are unable to log in synchronously. Remote learners can expect to join classes through Zoom or Google Classroom. And if your student is not able to participate, a written excuse or contact from a parent or guardian is required for any legal absence, whether they attend in person or remotely. Okay, in lunch, we are also gonna have grab and go lunches. You'll have a hot choice and a cold choice. They won't have the same amount of options they would have in a normal school day. So it'll be quick, 
take it and go. We are not using the lunch line in the traditional way that we have. Some classes will eat in the cafeteria and some classes will eat in, in the classroom. There will be a monitor per class for the entire lunch period. Um, we have the, with the square footage, the tables and um, desks, wherever the student will eat will be six feet apart. Um, just like in a restaurant, if a student has a mask, um, if people are moving around, we'll ask them to have their mask on. When everyone's seated and you're eating, obviously you can remove your mask so they can enjoy their breakfast or lunch. All right, I'm gonna talk a little, a little bit about the instructional day. While the model is different, we are still a, taking a student-centered approach when it comes to teaching and learning. Each day students will have new learning in the areas of English, English language arts, math, and content areas. Teachers will communicate and establish specific times for students to log in for mini lessons. Expect a consistent daily schedule to be established early in the school year and communicated to you. On in-person days, students will also have opportunities to conference with their teachers, participate in guided reading groups, and participate in intervention. Students will have opportunities to work with classroom materials that support understanding of different concepts that they explore. For example, students will still be able to use manipulatives during math and use um, classroom books. For any sort of shared, oh my, thing just flipped out. Uh, for any sort of shared materials, um, students would be expected to wash or sanitize their hands prior to and after use. Hold on. I need to log in again. Just take me a second. Take me one second. Hold on. But thanks. Just lock me out of Google. Let's get back to my next slide. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> All right, I got it. And to speak a little bit about special areas. Uh, physical education will be taking place two times a week for students. There will be one in person. For those who are in the hybrid model, you will have one in person PE class and one remote class. If you're a fully remote learner, then obviously both of your PE classes will be um, in the remote setting. Music will also take place two times a week. For in person learners, you would have in-person music class once every other week and that would be alternated with art in person once every other week so if you come to school on monday tuesday you will always have pe on one of those days and then every other week you would switch back and forth between in-person art and in-person music and then in the weeks where you don't have in-person art you would have art remotely so across the course of a week each student would receive two PE classes, two music classes, and an art class. And as far as library goes, our library media specialists will be pushing into classrooms during the ELA, ELA block each week, and students will have an opportunity for book exchange. We had a lot of questions about what the classroom was going to look like. So this, this is a big reason why uh, we selected the hybrid model as, as one of the options that we can provide um, because the mandate, the requirements uh, set forth by the state was that, that students had to wear a mask all day or we had to make sure that we were able to get the six feet uh, social distancing. So we are setting the classrooms up that the desks will be um, six feet apart. And so that way, when instruction is taking place in the classroom and the students are all at their seats, they will be able to take their mask off um, because we will, they will be more than six feet apart from other students um, in the classroom. Uh, when they are not uh, six feet apart or if they're moving around in the classroom, they will be then required to wear the mask. Uh, hand sanitizer will be available in each room. And we've mentioned it a couple of times about hand washing. Uh, hand washing at the elementary school will be a big thing this year. Uh, as soon as they arrive at school and enter the classroom, they're gonna wash their hands. Uh, anytime that they leave the classroom, they're going to wash their hands. When they return to the classroom, they're going to wash their hands. Um, so that's going to be a big piece of that. 
we will have cleaning and disinfecting supplies for hard surfaces on in each room and set up that the teacher may use. Um, masks will be available in each room. Uh, once again, we do ask that all, obviously students have their own mask and if they can bring one in, that an, an extra one, because on any given day, who knows what may happen with them, especially for K and uh, first grade. So if they could leave an, an extra mask, um, that would be great in the room. And we also will have gloves available uh, in each classroom uh, for the students and for the staff to use. Uh, but once again, we're, we're, we're setting up the classroom so that the desk um, and the students would be six feet apart um, during the instructional period. So the students would be able to remove the mask at, at that time. Uh, we've had quite a few questions about the playground. Uh, students will be able to use the playground and, and uh, actually at Churchville Elementary in Chestnut Ridge, they have two beautiful playgrounds that they can't wait for the kids to get on. And we know in the community that many students have already been on the three playgrounds and that's fantastic. Uh, there is only 50 students are allowed at one time on the playground. So once again, um, we will kind of be organizing that with teachers of when classes would be able to go out uh, to the playground so we don't go over that limit. Um, students will be required to wear masks if they are less than six feet apart on the playground. Um, and once again, the, the key to that is before they go out, they're going to wash their hands. And um, when they come back in, uh, they will also wash their hands uh, once again. Um, but we do want to get them outside. We do want to get them playing. And, and obviously, the, the wonderful playgrounds that we have now, we want to make sure that the students have an opportunity to enjoy them. Uh, the, uh, about technology, the, the biggest thing is the Chromebooks. Uh, last year when we went out, um, we did not have Chromebooks for our kindergarten students. Uh, this year, we will have Chromebooks for all of our students, K-4. Uh, we are set up, we have um, set up some times, and I'll get to that in a minute, of, so that we are going to be able to distribute the Chromebooks before school starts. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, the Chromebooks are really the key for any remote learning that takes place. Uh, each classroom teacher will, will have what's called a Google Classroom, uh, that they will be posting their assignments and videos, um, and actually their Zoom meetings, are, that they're going to be able to interact with the students that um, are remote. So the Chromebook is a, is a key piece of equipment that each child will need. Um, students will need the Chromebook in their charger daily uh, when they come to school on the days that they're here. Um, parents are going to have, and actually students too, are going to have to sign the acceptable use agreement. Uh, this is something that the students have signed in the past. Um, we will be sending it out in the summer pack at the mailing that goes out next week. There will be a copy of that. Um, the day that you come pick up your Chromebook, we're, we're asking that you bring that with you, already signed, already completed. Um, if not, then we have to have you pull over into another line and fill one out for us at that time. Uh, the, the issue too, is there, there's going to be an option for what's called the Chromebook Protection Plan, which is $10. It's basically an insurance policy. Uh, so if something were to happen to the Chromebook that was more of uh, your student, your child's fault or um, something like that, they were to drop it, they were lose, to lose it, if there's a protection plan that's uh, $10 and there'll be information about that of how parents can, um, can pay for that. Um, we will be providing carrying cases for the Chromebooks also. Unfortunately, they're not in and it looks like they will not be in before the school, start of the school year. So once we receive those, we will give them to the kids that are um, in the hybrid model and we'll figure out a way that we can get them to the remote learners. Uh, the Chromebook dates are as follows, and this will be posted on the website. This will be sent home in the mailings. Um, at Fairbanks Road, it'll be September 1st from nine to two and September 2nd um, from 12 to two and then from four to six in the evening. That aligns pretty closely with the middle school, knowing that families that have older children and have come to the middle school, um, we try to align that. So if you're coming on campus, you can hit that at the same day. Uh, CES and uh, CRS will be on September 2nd and 3rd, on the 2nd from 1 to 6, and then on the 3rd from 9 to 11. Uh, we are not doing it by alphabet, um, so we are just, um, you know, we're, we're having those times trying to get a little more flexibility for families. If for some reason those times don't work for your family because of work obligations, please just contact uh, the school office and we'll make other arrangements for that. Uh, Many of you are familiar when you pick them up in the spring, we're going to use the same process where you will be staying in your car 
Uh, you'll be stopped at some point. They'll radio in who it is that's, that's picking up the Chromebook. And by the time you come up and around the line, then we'll have the Chromebook uh, walked out to your car. Once again, we are going to need the acceptable use agreement signed by both the parents and the students. So, so please bring that with you um, when you come to pick up the phone. We're gonna take some time to answer some parent questions now. Um, we have some questions that were already sent in and we will start with those. Um, if you have other questions during our, our talk, you can uh, send those in as well. But uh, one of the first questions we have is, how does a teacher manage both in-person and remote learners at the same time? Well, in using Google Classroom, the teacher will be able to manage student expectations and assignments. The teachers are able to post daily routines, agendas, checklists, everything they need to organize for the day to help the students know what they need to do what they need to understand. And uh, it, so Google Classroom is where you want to really spend some time uh, when you get your Chromebook getting comfortable with. Zoom is uh, once again going to be our primary video conferencing tool. So teachers will make decisions on how to log, uh, on how long your students will um, need to be online for instruction or collaboration with their classmates. So over the summer, we've had groups of teachers working together to create lesson templates for the hybrid learning model and put together tips for teachers. Um, knowing this is our first time teaching in a hybrid model, we've spent a lot of time looking at instruction and how to make it easier. I think parents have to understand too, knowing it's the first time um, teaching in this model that um, we're hoping that it's good to start, but we know that over time it'll just get better as teachers get more experience in it and also have time to collaborate and work together and share ideas. Now on Wednesday, we have that flexible time um, where students are remotely. Teachers will be spending a lot of time collaborating and uh, helping each other get better with our instruction, but also within that time, there are office hours that teachers will have that they can um, meet with students uh, in small groups or connect one-on-one -on -one with a student that may be having difficulty or need a little previewing for a certain topic. One, one of the things I'm gonna jump in here a little bit too with the instruction, uh, with that being remote learners, uh, the students are not gonna be expected to be on that computer all day long. The teachers will be giving them a schedule of when to log in. So there'll be different times during the day that they will have to log in. And usually in the morning, they'll be able to log in for their morning meeting and kind of get set up uh, for the day. There'll be a time during ELA. There'll be a time for math instruction. Um, but even then, it won't be the entire lesson. It'll be a part of the lesson, the mini lesson, um, what the teacher wants to emphasize. Uh, there'll be different activities that uh, they'll be able to do both remotely and in person and, and combining them that teachers will, can get creative with. Um, but once again, the remote learners will not be sitting there on the computer all day long. They'll be logging in at certain points, then doing some assignments, having a little break or whatever, um, and coming back and forth um, for the instruction. Yeah. And th those schedules will be clear to the parents and the, and the students as we get started. Um, so you know when you need to log in and when you don't. And then in the event that you can't log in for some reason, our next question says is, will class sessions be recorded? And um, especially thinking about the kids that might miss some instruction. And the answer to that is yes and no. So there's no expectation for the entire class, the whole school day to be recorded and posted. But things like mini lessons and lectures, some PowerPoints, Things that are important to the instruction for the student, um, we are hoping to record so that the student can achieve the objective of that day's lesson. I'd like to jump into with something else about the technology. Um, we recognize that our kindergarten students, especially, and some of our first graders will, um, it would be challenging for them to log in, signing in with their name when they're just learning their letters. Um, so those students, kindergarten and first graders, will actually have a QR code, which is a little 
uh, like barcode sort of thing that they would hold up in front of the camera and that logs them in so that they don't have to memorize a password to get in. And we also learned from the spring that some folks need some extra help in just trying to navigate like how do I get into Google Classroom and where do I click once I'm in there? Where do I find my, our assignments? So um, our instructional technology coach has actually been working on creating some videos that we will be sharing the information with you guys so you can watch them. And it's really a nice resource step-by-step -step of how to get in and how to utilize that platform. We're excited that we can get the Chromebooks to students um, on the first week in September. So they have a little time to get familiar with it. So, um, you know, we, we wouldn't want the first day of school to be the first time the, the child tries to figure out how to work technology. So the other piece with the, the recordings, and we've had this question asked quite a bit, is the confidentiality piece. So when a teacher is recording the lesson, they're actually, the camera is going to be on them or their screen that they're using. It's not, a, it's not a camera up above that's focused on all the students in the classroom. Um, so once again, it's going to be on the teacher or their computer screen or their big screen in their, in their classroom. Uh, the Zoom meetings that the students will be participating in, uh, once again, that's a, that's a password protected environment. So yes, they can see their classmates and they will be able to actually talk with their classmates and be able to go into uh, almost like side rooms to do work with their classmates. Uh, through Google, they're going to be able to interact with their classmates, whether they're remote or in person. Um, but once again, the Google Classroom is password protected. So folks from the outside or just some random person could, cannot uh, get into those sites uh, without those passwords. And that's another reason why we're not recording everything so that we don't have students in any recordings. It's just specific. All right. All right, another question had to do with supply lists and all schools um, have their supply lists now listed on the district website. So if you needed information about what your child needs to bring to school, just go to cccsd.org and you should be able to find those lists. We had another question about how will we manage masks when kids are in PE or other places where they may not need them how will we store them so they're not on the ground or used by other kids accidentally? Well, we um, would ask you to label your mask with a permanent marker if you can. And um, also at school, students will receive a lanyard that they can wear. And there's a clip on their mask um, for their mask on the lanyard. So when they're not using it, they can clip their mask on so that they don't lose it. In PE, um, the question was where they don't need them. Well, they may need them in PE if they're going to be doing anything uh, in close proximity to each other. When they're six feet apart, they don't need the mask. If they're doing something where um, they're exerting more energy and breathing hard, then they're going to be asked to be 12 feet apart. And teachers are prepared for... Uh, how to manage that situation. Yeah. All right, we have a question about transportation. Uh, I signed up for transportation for my child. When there are times that I can drive them to school, do I need to let the office know? So for the morning time, if you have a change and you're going to drive them to school, you wouldn't need to contact the office to let us know that you're dropping them off. You can just drive them to school and um, take them to the parent drop off area. Now at the end of the day, if they're slated to be riding the bus and you're going to pick them up, then we would need you to contact the office or utilize the app um, once we get the information on that. Uh, I do believe that there's uh, a way for you to just click in there and notify the office through that, through the Pick My Kid app. The next question, uh, will I be able to bring my child to school prior to the first day to meet his or her teacher and bring in their school supplies. You know, um, is elementary schools, we're in the business of kids and, and building those connections. Unfortunately, this year, um, things are going to look very different. So we will not be having students and their families come in prior to the first day of school. However, teachers can be very creative in sending pictures of their classrooms, 
sending short videos. I believe all of them send letters home to introduce themselves and meet their families. Um, and just to, so you know, and that you feel more comfortable, we have plenty of staff in all three of the elementary schools on those first days and weeks to help every student find their classroom and, and get down there with smiles on their faces ready to go. So we're prepared for that. Another question we have is how will my child who is full remote, a full remote learner get the materials he needs for learning from his teacher? And if you noticed, we didn't fill in the blanks underneath this, because this is something we're still trying to work out. Uh, many of our resources that we do use, for example, like our, our math and visions, yes, the children do have a, a workbook, but many of that uh, information and those resources are online also. Uh, so we're still in the process of figuring out, okay, what materials can they use online and that teachers will be able to post in Google Classroom and the students will, will be able to respond right there and send it back in um, electronically. Um, and then also what materials then they really they will need, um, you know, that we normally have in the classroom that, that we distribute. So that's something we're still working on of how we're going to do that for the full remote learners. Obviously the hybrid kids, um, it's easy to send things home with them. Uh, but once again, this is something that we're gonna work out and we will let, let parents know. Uh, we had another question about the desk uh, being clean and sanitized. So uh, when we were looking at the models, one of the reasons why we selected to go on Monday, Tuesday, um, verse, and then Thursday, Friday, versus a Monday, Thursday, and a Tuesday, and a Friday, uh, is that we will have the same kids um, coming to school and sitting at the same desk in the same classroom for two days in a row. Uh, so yes, every day after school, those desks will be wiped down, the chairs will be wiped down and cleaned for those individual seats. And then on Wednesday, they'll be cleaned again um, prior to the other students um, coming. Uh, so then Thursday, Friday, it will be a new group in those desks and chairs. In the desk, the students are not keeping their supplies like they would traditionally and have their own desk. Uh, things are not gonna be kept in there, uh, but they'll be clean daily. They'll be clean once again on the Wednesday or then after Friday um, for the other group so they're ready. The common areas are probably the biggest areas um, of concern is that when students walk in, the hand railings, the doorknobs, all that, uh, those are gonna be constantly wiped down throughout the day by our, our custodians. Um, and once again, in the classroom, there will be cleaning materials uh, that when the custodians go in there, they can use, but then also that will be available for teachers if they feel they need, they need to wipe something down more in their classroom um, environment. Uh, and there will be hand sanitizer available in each classroom. I already mentioned before about the hand washing over and over again. This slide we wanted to include um, because this, we just really feel it's really important. We, we're going to get to some more parent questions uh, in just a moment, but we wanted to, to bring this up because all of us are actually anxious about the start of the new year. Um, and every year, there's always that anxiety that comes with a new school year and starting off a new school year. And, and this year is a little bit different too. But there's also the anticipation of the students being able to see their friends again and being back at school and the excitement that goes along with that and being in a, meeting a new teacher and being in a new classroom. Um, but as parents, I know your anxiety levels is probably higher than it ever has been before. Uh, the one thing we ask and always keep in mind is that your kids are going to take the cues from you. Um, it, it's, it's very normal that you're feeling anxious about school right now. Um, but if you're having conversations with your spouse or your neighbors or your friends um, and, and expressing some of your concerns, uh, you may want to be careful of doing that in front of your children. Um, as you know, kids have big ears and big eyes and they pick up on everything. Um, so they're going to take you, how you feel about school reopening and them going to school, they're going to take that on themselves. Um, the flip side is that we know, and one of the things we always try to teach kids is how to regulate through those feelings. So if you do have some anxiety and you share that with your student, your child, make sure that you explain too of what you're going through and that also how you are working through that. Um, if you get upset about something, you may end up going for a walk and, and explain to your child, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go take a walk just to calm down about this. One, one again, whether it's school or anything, those are great ideas. Um, we are constantly teaching uh, students to how to regulate their feelings, uh, that it's okay to feel different feelings, 
um, but then also how to help help regulate right through them. Um, we greatly appreciate your patience uh, as the start of the school year. So like I said, things are gonna change when we get into it. You know, just the arrival and dismissal the first day, it, I guarantee it's gonna change the second day because it might not go as smooth as we hope on the first day. Uh, and finally, uh, there's some reminders um, that if you visit uh, cccsd.org reopening, um, please make sure you subscribe to eNews for building and district-wide updates. Uh, you can continue to uh, email questions to the help desk. Uh, this is something that um, goes directly to the principals, actually the superintendent, the principals, the secretaries, and we quickly get back to parents about the questions you have. So I'm sure there'll still be more questions between now and the start of the school year. And once again, you can, you can call any of the offices and, and we're gonna be able to help you out as much as possible. Um, we do have a lot going on between now and those letters going out next week for class placement. Um, so we're still finalizing what students are remote and hybrid. And then obviously the alpha split, has, we've had to change quite a few classes because of that to make sure we have a good balance. Uh, and finally, the uh, pay, payment for meals are in advance via check um, or what's called My School Bucks link on the nutritional service page of the website. So please make sure you check that out. Um, we are no longer going to be in the, um, exchanging money with, with students every day. Um, so pay up front with a check or the My School Bucks account. So there's information on the website. And you can send cash in as well versus a check, but it might just be easier to manage with um, checks to make sure it's credited to the right student's account. Um, we do have one more question and it is about transportation. So one of the things that we've shared is the loading of buses. And for elementary, that's changing a little bit. So can you explain how buses are gonna be loaded and unloaded differently at elementary and the reasoning behind that? Well, the, the unloading of the bus is going gonna, is gonna to be different because traditionally at 9.05 in the, in the three schools, the doors of the bus is open and the students get off and all come in. Um, and it takes a little time because you can have you know, 400 students entering the building at one time. It's a little tricky. Uh, what we are going to do is stagger that. There'll be a, a staff members out there and telling the first bus you may start unloading. And as that bus, those students are walking down the walk and are in a safer distance, and then we're going to let the, bus, the next bus know and so forth. So we'll take a few more minutes uh, to get the students in the school. Uh, but once again, we're trying to spread out the, uh, the kids. So when they get to the front door, they don't all get backed up. Um, the dismissal process, uh, once again, we're gonna remove, have all the students that are being picked up. That will go first. Uh, so those cars and those students uh, are out of the way. And then uh, we're still finalizing the exact process, whether it will be by bus or by classroom. Um, most likely by classroom because of the, uh, especially for the younger students, it's important that they get walked out to the buses, directly to their buses, but um, they, they will also be staggered. We traditionally stagger it to start with and we will probably even make it a little bit longer. Um, please note the first couple of days of school, and this is true every year, that if it says that your child will be home by at 3.50, uh, the first day of school, we're traditionally always 20 minutes late. It gets better as the week goes on, usually by Friday, it's we're good to go and we're pretty, we're pretty close to what we are. This year, we're predicting that that will be a little bit longer. So if your child's not home right at 350, when that paper says they're going to be home that first couple of days, don't call the office right away. They're fine. It's just going to take us a little bit uh, longer those first few days. It, it might be a little easier, though, given that we have fewer kids. So that's true, too. Maybe, maybe it'll be easier. Kim? Also, um, as far as loading and unloading on the bus itself, um, I know that our director of transportation met with us yesterday and shared a modification from the original plan. So what it sounds like is going to happen for elementary kids is when they get on the bus from home in the morning, uh, the driver will have them seating, sitting with the youngest to oldest grades from the youngest sitting in the front of the bus to the older kids sitting in the back of the bus. Now, if you have a sibling and there's a first grader and a fourth grader, um, the younger child seating trumps all, all things. So the older child will have to sit closer to the front with that younger um, sibling in that seat up there. So they'll be loading kids onto the bus and having them sitting close to the window and um, younger kids towards the front and older kids towards the back. 
And then when everybody will need to wear their face mask when they're on the bus, getting on and off and the entire ride while on the bus, which um, is, isn't that long, not like where I grew up back in the day and I had a 30 minute bus ride to school and back, but uh, our kids are very fortunate in that their runs are a lot shorter than that. So, but they will be wearing those face masks while they are at the bus. The uh, one other piece that when one of the principals was talking about was going back to attendance. Um, I did have some parents ask me, you know, if their child wasn't feeling great, so they decided to keep them home, which is what we want, we're asking you to do. Can they still log in remotely, even though that's not the remote day? And the answer to that is absolutely. Uh, if they're not in school that day, they can log in remotely uh, to see what's going on and to participate um, in school. Uh, superintendents kind of joke that the days of uh, snow days are over with because now if there was ever the, the weather's bad that we would actually have a remote learning day versus a snow day where everyone would go remote. Um, I know the, the students don't want to hear that nor do the teachers because everybody likes a snow day. Um, but the power still can go out. Yeah. So there still is hope. We can still have <laughs> <everybody laughs> <have more hours, laughs> right? so. um, right. Well, once again, we, we thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to an exciting new school year. Uh, we're hoping that, uh, that everything goes the way it's planned, but we know it's not going to, and we're going to make the adjustments needed, and we can't wait to 